Alright, so in the last video we went through the algebra of complex numbers and how we could actually perform operations between complex numbers and in this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to a very important theorem which is called the Moivre's theorem so the Moivre's theorem and basically what it tells us is that if you are taking the power of a particular complex number, so we're going to express it in, in polar form, e to the power of i theta to the power of n, this is the same as writing cosine n theta plus i sine n theta, and this is a really, really important application because basically if we're interested in finding the value of something like, sorry, not 5, that should be i, to the power of 5, then how would we find that? Well, we could expand this using the binomial theorem, but that obviously would take a long time. And in the end, we would end up with a whole bunch of factors that we need to um, rearrange and cancel out and so forth. So that wouldn't be a very efficient procedure. The Morbius theorem tells us that if we express this complex number in polar form, we can just raise it to some power of n, and then we can find it in Cartesian form by converting it back through this formula. So let's find what this complex number is. Let's have this complex number. Let's plot it on the complex plane first, the Argon diagram. We're going to have one here, and we're going to have one here. So our complex number is going to be there. So what's going to be the angle between this and the real axis? Well, it has to be 45 degrees, which is the same as pi on 4 radians. So that means that if we want to express this in polar form, we need to find the magnitude. So the magnitude is going to be what? It's going to be square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared. So that's square root of 2. And now we're going to express this as, so I'm just going to call this that. We're going to have square root of 2 times e to the power of i times pi over 4. So what do we do now? Well, if we want to raise both sides to the power of 5, what we're going to end up with on this side is going to be square root of 32, so that's 2 to the power of 5 square root, and this is going to be e to the i 5 pi on 4, like that. So we have already found the solution, the, the new value, in terms of its polar form, but if we want to convert back to Cartesian form like this, then we need to use this formula here. So this comes actually comes down to, um, so that's going to be 2 times 16, right? Which is going to be 4 times square root of 2. So we can rewrite this as 4 square root of 2 e to the power of i 5 pi over 4. And then what we're going to have is we're going to have 4 square root of 2 cosine of 5 pi on 4 plus i sine 5 pi on 4. And then if we plug this into our calculator, this comes down to the following number. It's going to be minus 4 minus 4i. So that's the complex number that we get from this in its Cartesian form. So that's 4, and that's 4 as well. So that's a really interesting result because essentially if we plot this back on the Argon diagram, that's going to be somewhere around here. So that's going to be minus 4 and 4, and then the complex number is going to be here. If you notice something interesting about it, it's making a 45 degree angle with respect to real axis if you look at it from this direction, or it is the same as saying 135 degrees in the opposite direction like this. So it is actually pointing in the same direction as that complex number. It's collinear with that complex number, with that pole. And it is actually elongated because it makes sense because we raised this to the power of five so we got a, l a much longer complex number. So that's a really interesting geometrical property. And we can show that this, um, that this particular result is conserved with other types. So let's have the complex number 1 minus i to the power of 5. If we plot that on the Argon diagram, we're going to have the following. That's going to be 1 minus 1. So that's going to be your number. 
And what do you think our complex number should be? Well, if you, I rec I'm gonna leave that as an exercise for you so you practice the same method, but what you should get is the following. You should get a number that is defined by minus four and four in here. So it's going to be the same as that, but it's now going to be pointing this direction because the complex number has um, changed to pointing in that direction. So that's going to be a really interesting property of the Moivre's theorem. Now the Moivre's theorem um, is very useful for finding a lot of different things and essentially with powers, but it is also useful for finding roots of complex numbers. And that's something that I'm gonna leave to a later video. But for now, just remember that if you're given a complex number you, and you want to find the value when you raise it to some power, it could be any power, it could be something like two plus three i to the power of a hundred. I mean, obviously using the binomial theorem to expand this out is gonna take you forever. But using this formula, you can actually find it really easy. All you need to do is you find the magnitude of the complex number first, you find the angle, and then you just raise that polar form to that power of n. Once you have that, you just put it into this formula so that n is going to become a factor of that angle on both cosine and sine. And then by evaluating this, you get back to the Cartesian form. So this is a really, really interesting theorem. And it is actually useful for a lot of other things other than just evaluating complex numbers. Because in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can use the Moivre's theorem to derive trigonometric identities. So that's going to be another very interesting application of this theorem.